Moshi Moshi my gamers and welcome back to Genji and Crack. Pearls, gems and gold, such are the bounties of the mountains. The ancient times are the blessing of the past. It is within the furnace of the chin of echoes that all these blessings are brought to function. Yet when the hammer emerges blows are halted by his station, the echoes that wings out through the peaks also fall mute. Can the name emerge who has the watchful eye of the mountains heal that which the wings sail off? Today we're doing a Chelani story quest. Not too long ago, I accidentally went to the story quest, not okay, knowing this a is the story quest. Getting close. It's really. Let's search the area. Stay on your toes, though, traveler. Got a promise. I was saying, um, I those red marks I saw in the map, I thought they were like side quests, but not knowing this is like story quest you could do with voice lines. I was like, no, like, I was like, get away from me! And I got you. Milani got you. Release! Kuchina, Kuchina, Kuchina! Oh no, she's being bounced a lot! Lenny! Where did you come from? So, so strong! Let's get out of here, boys! Run! Leave the stuff if you want to live! Drop all of it! Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> well, they didn't put up much of a fight. Nope, they pussies. Oh, well, Vision has his pucks. <sighs> Thank you so much. I thought I wasn't going to make it down this mountain alive. Saved by the Traveler. Guess my luck's not too bad today. Uh huh. Sorry. Let me introduce myself. I'm Chevin, a gem artisan. I'm not usually this lucky, but maybe things are looking up. Amex sent us to help. She did, huh? I didn't mean to make her worry. I wasn't planning to be gone longer than two days, tops. But then I discovered a new seam of volcanic crystal near the shadow pin. It's a large deposit and the purity is exceptional. I dug up a whole bunch of it and was getting ready to head back. But the phlogiston within the crystals attracted monsters. Anyway, I'm sure you've seen the state this place is in. It's all because the shadow pin suddenly came crashing to the ground and left behind a massive crater. The seam I found was closer to the outside, so it survived the disaster. Still, the crash riled up the monsters in the area, and now they're everywhere. I panicked and ran up a narrow path to avoid them. But by the time I was in the clear, I ended up running into those bandits. You showed up in the nick of time. If the situation was so dangerous, why didn't you just drop the crystals and run? I left most of them behind, believe me. I only kept the purest chunk. I have to bring it back no matter what. For Tlasoli and poor little Nechka. Who are they? Ah, uh, right, you wouldn't know. Tlasoli is a former ancient name artisan. And Nechka is her daughter. Shaloli is that line of business too. Oh, you know Shilonen? <laughs> Try mentioning that name in front of Tlasoli. She could sing Shilonen's praises forever. The foremost expert in ancient names. The future of our tribe. The finest artisan in that land. You'll never hear the end of it. I know Tlasoli misses the days when she used to forge ancient names. She'd never say as much, but I can tell. Hmm. Why did she stop? Because of her daughter. Poor Nechka contracted an awful illness, and Tlasoli put everything aside to take care of her. Even as Nechka's illness grew worse, Tlasoli never gave up. Like a torch in the night, she was determined to burn bright, even as darkness encroached from all directions. Still, all's well that ends well. Thanks to the doctor's medicine and the Wyop's protection, Nechka's flame was rekindled. Her condition has been slowly improving ever since. She's still weak, of course, and has to recuperate at home. But she's well enough to write letters already. She often writes to Shilonen, apparently. Her dream is to become an ancient names forger, just like her mother. Her birthday's in a few days, so... Tlasoli asked me to find a pure volcanic crystal to give her as a present. No wonder you wouldn't leave the crystal behind. Yeah, talk about an important chunk of ore! What a nice gift! Paimon hopes it helps her feel better. I'm sure she and her mother appreciate your well wishes. Alright, let's head back. 
I'm sure Imish is worried sick. Actually, why don't you come with me to visit Plasoli tomorrow? It's all thanks to you that I managed to bring back the crystal. You deserve a reward for helping us protect something so significant. I also makes Nani happy. That's right! A good mood makes for a quick recovery! And of course, we wouldn't say no to a little gift. <laughs> Don't worry, something tells me you'll like this one. But I'll let Plasoli tell you what it is herself. Okay. Okay, that was first act complete. So now we'll do the next one. I'll is learn soon. Hey, I'm healed. Hey, we're healed. This is like day two. Oh, you're early. Looking forward to your gift? We'll just have to visit Chaloni and Naxisha. That's right. Nechka's been so sick. I mean, that's good. Plasoli had to give up what she loves. Some days I'll cough you might get better. But they could probably still use some cheering up. <laughs> I've already asked someone to swing by and let Plasoli know we're coming. She's probably made all the necessary preparations. Let's go then. Do you mind watching the story, Mish? I'll be right back. Because I bring the main character to me. Poise Echoes. Act 2. Might do one, might do all one episode, but to me, how long is this? They live here, I see. Hello? Anyone home? Here we are. Nice house, right? Give me a sec, I'll go knock. Knock knock, motherfucker! Flasoli! Open up! They're here! Flasoli? Are you home? Open the door! That's strange. Huh, the door's locked. But she shouldn't be out at this time of day. Hey, Nechka! Nechka! It's me, Chevin! Open up, please! No response. Still, I told Plasoli we were coming. Maybe she had to take Nechka out to get some medicine. They appear? Hey! What's that over there? Looks like a Tepetlisaur nest! That's right. Plasoli has a Tepetlisaur companion. If I remember right, its name is... Iengu? When she was still in the forging business, she'd often have Iengu help with some digging work. But since Nechka fell ill, she hasn't let it dig much recently. Wait a minute. What the... This place is a mess! Yangu's nowhere to be seen either. Oh, look at all these broken boxes! Something terrible must have happened! Let's take a closer look. Oh yeah, look at this place. It looks very suspicious at this point. Uh, look for clues... Let's turn to this because I'm not... A trip ended this cliff! Could the Tepetlasaur have climbed up the mountain? Let's head up there and see! I'm your pet! Why? <laughs> okay, let's go this way. No. Follow the path, that one says? I mean, sh warning sign. Hold on, let me leave me that. So, the workshop is closed, no entry. The workshop entrance seems to be blocked by a modern wall. It looks like there's so no way to gain entry. Gain entry? Oh, look at that, it went up. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it. Do, 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 do. Got the box. Ouch! Okay, I gotta go around those things. Uh oh. I mean, wait, I don't need those. Just don't touch them. Okay, now this is when I go. Hello? Can I not? Oh, there you go. I'm supposed to do that. Hello? Oh, look, someone's here. Might not be Tlasoli's companion, though. Uh, at least it doesn't seem to be any danger. Uh, Paimon still doesn't see any sign of Tlasoli. Hey, traveler, Paimon! Yes? That's Chevin's voice! It looks like the soul next to her. Come down, quick! Tlasoli's here! Huh? We just got up here and Tlasoli's back already? What a coincidence. Yeah, quite a coincidence. Well, guess this means we should head back down. Why is the Tepetlasaur coming along? Whoa, hey, hey, don't run, you'll hit us! Oh no, she just tackled us! <laughs> we got clothesline! Oh, never mind, you just ended the, the mountains. Iangu, I think... come here! Are you being naughty again? Naughty?! We is about to put a thing up, the, up my ass, in Paimons? <sighs> oh, that's a shame, he said I was getting horny, I'm sorry. But he's a boy! That's a good sign. Oh, you must be hungry. 
Sorry. I'll whip up something for you later. All right, run along and play now. I'll come along in a sec. <gasps> oh, sorry, you two. I was waiting for you at home when Nechka... Well, she snuck out and ran off by herself. She said she just wanted to pick some flowers for our guests, but she ended up getting lost along the way. Luckily, I managed to find her before long. Is she all right? Yeah! Chavik told us she was just starting to get better! She's still very weak. The shock and the cold wind certainly didn't help, so she ended up with a slight fever. I gave her some medicine and now she's in bed, but it's nothing a good night's rest can't fix. That said, she won't be able to meet you today. I'm sorry you came all this way for nothing. Don't worry about it. We know she's still recovering. Chevin told us how serious her illness was. Her health definitely comes first. We were just dropping by to check on her. Sounds like she's doing well enough to run up on her own, too. Yes, and to run away from meeting her vegetables. She's a fast one, that's for sure. She jumps over chairs, hides under the table, then runs all around the house. I can hardly catch her. Seeing how she is now, that's already enough. I really couldn't ask for more. Hey, cheer up! This is supposed to be a happy occasion. We do appreciate that she tried to welcome us with flowers. Anyway, tell us Oli, about the thing I was telling you before. The gift! Yeah, what did you get us? Well, it's a blaze gem inscription. I made it from the purest oh. ore, so it's almost completely resistant to erosion. The techniques used to make it are all rooted in ancient name forging. So it's like a simple version of the ancient name. <laughs> Don't say that or the wild might smite me. The process just uses a few of the same techniques and materials. When I first made one, I didn't think it could serve any practical purpose, apart from the erosion resistance and the general aesthetic. But then Chevin suggested using the crystals to make a special kind of ornament. Blaze gem inscriptions made by an ancient name artisan, engraved with words that never fade. Quite the sales pitch, don't you think? Wow, that description really does make it seem special! Hmm. No wonder you won your own story. <laughs> Tlasoli's blaze gem inscriptions really are special, though. Word of mouth isn't always reliable. As information gets passed along, it becomes incomplete, forgotten, and sometimes even distorted. But the words inscribed on these crystals will stand the test of time. The inscription will never deteriorate, and the meaning will never get twisted. It's the perfect gift for a dear friend or significant other. You could even pass it down to younger generations. Hmm. You're really pushing the sales pitch. Hi, that's interested! Let's buy one, Traveler! We can engrave our names onto it! Then, once we find your sister, we can get her to add her name as well! Oh, that's really that sweet. That way, our names will be together forever! <laughs> Looks like Paimon's already been hooked. You deserve it! You saved me! And Nechka's birthday present! It's the least I can do to repay you. Chevin, I thought I told you. Don't you start acting shy too, Tlasoli. It's a great gift. I know how much work goes into one of your Blaze Gem inscriptions. Well then, thank you both. I'll have it ready as soon as possible. Then, I'll have you do the inscription yourself. Nechka should be well by then. She'll be very excited to meet you. Good thing we're better with company. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't even know how expensive that would be. You sure we have enough travel funds? Hold on. This isn't part of some scheme to make us spend all of our mora, right? Chevin? Why do you go up to me like that? You never know. You do look like you have some savings to spare. No, don't listen to that, Traveler. You'll end up losing all your mora. <laughs> In any case, it's up to you. <laughs> oh, look, he's back. Oh, no, it's the Tepatlasaur again. Quick, someone stop it. Paimon doesn't want to get run over again. Well, they'll they want to run them someone, run over Paimon. <laughs> nope, he's like, fuck. I want to win a pie one, but never mind. Also, if you don't mind, Tlesoli, I'd like you to help me repair my blaze gem inscription. I dropped it when I was attacked earlier. The rope and clasp both snapped, so I haven't been wearing it. I tried fixing it myself, but I just couldn't get it to stay. Could you help? Just leave it to me. I'll make it as good as new. Thank you, Chevin, for going all that way and... It was nothing. We all just want Nechka to get better. You're right. Miangu, behave yourself. I'll feed you in just a second. I'll have Chevin contact you once everything's ready, Traveler. Maybe we'll even line it up with Nechka's birthday. We can even have a little party. Oh, that sounds great! We'll look forward to all the good food and 
we'll make sure we're ready to eat. Anyway, see you around, Pozoli. I hope that she gets better soon. Look after yourselves. Nechka is going to be so happy to meet you. Okay, is that it? Damn! As you know, I'm gonna finish the whole quest. That was like really short, just like the first one. There's an open the damn door. I don't wanna sleep outside anymore. Shalori's workshop finally I was like when are we gonna see Is she okay? She seems so tired. Shalori, good thing you're here. I'm wondering if I can oh, so uh, the shelf on the left, second row down, first deck. Oh, on the right. still awake. That one's yours. And the garden hoe belongs to Iknal and then <gasps> Make sure you take the one that's yours. She said the word ho ho in this game! <laughs> oh god. I haven't even said why I'm here. But looks like you're about to head out for a break. <laughs> yes, but I am going to take it right here. The temperature is just perfect today. Really? But doesn't it feel a lot hotter than usual? I really don't want to stay out in this heat. Exactly. In hot weather like this, customers don't tend to stick around and talk when they're coming to place orders or pick up the goods. I see. Oh, here comes another customer. I'll just leave you to it then. And pick up my axe. She's like, ugh. Sure, sounds good to me. Hey, Shiloni! Oh, oh, Paimon, the hell was that? Oh, Traveler, Paimon! We meet again. Hmm. You two seem to be in good spirits. What an awkward position to for power to appeal. How's your uh, Pilgrim's Chronicle been? Run into any issues? No, everything is fine. Oh, good. It was also my first time receiving a Pilgrim's Chronicle. Even though I've already turned it over to you, there are still a lot of things that could go wrong, so I wasn't sure if there'd be any issues. Huh? So, uh, what are the chances that something might still go wrong? Well, less than the chances of Mualani accidentally falling off a spirit way, I'd say. Oh, well that definitely would never happen. I found the actually Lonin. Thanks a lot. By the way, Nitchka's birthday's coming up real soon. Are you planning to visit her? I prepared a gift, and was just getting ready to take it to her. Uh, you're not planning on giving the kid a full set of pliers again, are you? Or, let me guess, woodworking tools? I would like to say two. Where can I buy one? Oh, uh, yeah, I make these myself, and it's a lot of work. But if you like a set, I can make some time and forge one for you. Great! We often camp out in the wild, but a set of Shimonin's tools would make pitching a tent and starting a bonfire a whole lot easier. Well, still, I won't be giving Nichka any tools this year. She wrote me a letter saying that she'd like a copy of To Kill the Brave. The book is not what you call a bestseller, but luckily, I have a few copies in my collection. They were really old editions that were published a long time ago, but they should still be readable. <laughs> Children her age love fairy tales. The last time I was at Tosoli's, I even brought Nechka. Huh. Wait, what did I bring her again? It must have been her favorite thing, but, uh, why can't I remember it anymore? Oh, it is quite hot today. Seems you're about to pass out from the heat. Do you even remember your own name? My memory can't be this bad. It's just these last few days. <sighs> I've been forgetting things for some odd reason. Well, in that case, why don't you use the Blaze Gem inscription you have as a memo to engrave some important things to remember? After all, that inscription will never wear out. And it's easy to carry. I'd say that's quite a fitting use for it. <clears throat> you do have a point, but my inscription is almost already full. Your name is Delon? No, no. I engraved some wishes on my Blaze Jam inscription. You know, just some dreams that I have for the future and things I'd like to accomplish one day. Even though Tasoli has said that from an aesthetic point of view, it would be best for people to keep their inscription short, this Blaze Gem inscription was still made by a name engraver, the forger of ancient names themselves. Everyone thinks that the inscription she made might have some wondrous powers. So, 
Many people who bought Blaze Gem inscriptions engraved their wishes and dreams on them in hopes that they would come true. Sounds kind of like a wish granter. But if you do that, won't everyone be able to see your wishes and dreams? Yeah, that could be a little embarrassing. <laughs> Don't worry. We usually ask Clotholi to add the inscriptions for us. She has a unique method of engraving. With her method, the light must be at a certain angle in order to see the text. Without the right angle of lighting, the blaze gem inscription will just look like a pretty stone. That's true. In the end, a blaze gem inscription is essentially just a piece of rock. It doesn't have the power to grant people's wishes. Making wishes to it is like uh, shouting into an echoing valley. The only one who will answer is yourself. But using it as a journal for your wishes is also fine. Carrying them with you and taking a look from time to time can be a good source of encouragement. Well, as long as you don't suddenly change your mind and want to take your wishes back, that is. These things are extremely durable. It would take a lot of effort to change the words. And I don't think anyone would willingly part with it either. They're not cheap and very hard to get. If you ever lost it, you'd just be filled with regret. Still, it's, huh, it's really strange. Given Auntie's skill, how could it take so long for her to make one? Huh. Oh, well, I hope someone didn't give her an idea of making fewer and selling for more. Ugh, I know just the person who would do that. <laughs> it's true, Chevin would totally have put that in her ear. Still, I don't think it's such a bad thing for Tosoli to make some money by selling these. At least she and little Nechka are better off now, and won't have to worry about the cost of treating her illness anymore. I was really worried about their family at first, and was even planning to send them some... Uh, send some... Huh? What was I planning to send to Nechka again? Ugh, this memory of mine. All right, if you stay out in the heat for any longer, I'm afraid even the inscription won't be able to save your memory. You should, uh, go back. Yeah, get some rest. Right, uh, right. <laughs> Please give my regards to Tlesoli and Nechka. What's going on? Maybe I should go talk to Aaron Lee to get some medicine. So you'll be going to Nechka's birthday party too, Shilonin? Oh, perfect! Then let's go together! Oh, yeah, sure, but I didn't expect you to know Tosoli too. She hasn't been coming to the tribe much lately, so how did you get a chance to talk with her? Ashley... Who oh, explain? You explain you cattle with, uh, torrential only. So that's how you met her. She even wants to use volcanic crystal as a forging material. Huh? Eh, guess she's uh, really pulling out all the stops for her daughter. Wait, what if the crystal she mined made her lost memories? We also want to get, get to gift for her. Then let's just go and ask. Come on, I want to give her the book anyway. What is it? Huh? Wait a second, our birthday gift's supposed to be a surprise? If we ask Nechka, then she'll know what gift we'll be giving her. And that would ruin the surprise! But if you don't ask her, then how will you know what kind of present she would like? Here's another idea. Perhaps you can also give her a storybook based on what she wrote in her letter. That might be a good option. Easy enough. I have loads of those in my bag. But shouldn't we give it a little more thought? If we all give her books, it might seem like we didn't put much effort into it. Shilonin, have you really never asked her what she would like the most? There must be something else she'd like besides books! Unfortunately, no. Nechka's illness has kept flaring up over the past few years. Apparently, she couldn't do anything during that time other than rest in bed. She didn't even have the strength to talk to anyone. It wasn't until recently that she started to recover from her illness and regain strength to write letters to others. Anyway, there's no need to overthink it. Worst case scenario, I can split the book into two volumes and we can each give her one. Good idea. difficult to explain. You see, there are actually two versions of To Kill the Brave. The premise of the book is pretty straightforward. 
It's basically about a set of twin brothers working to defeat a demon lord. But after defeating the demon lord, the older brother, Tequil, discovers that the king spirit has possessed his younger brother, Remok. In the ending of the original story, the older brother kills his younger brother to defeat the demon lord before jumping into a volcano. Oh, look, story time. I changed my mind. I'm not reading this whole paragraph. I remember there was one line that was super popular at the time. If I still remember right, after being possessed by the goddess Kualikwe, Remok said, I do not wish to see your blood be reduced to ash. But I have seen the light of your heart and spirit. Remember my name, brother. As long as you remember me, I will never have left. So what about the other version of the story? The other version was released only recently. The author heard a suggestion from someone and suddenly decided to try and make a stake in the fairy tale market, so the story was revised. In the revised version, the brothers killed the demon lord together and both survived. According to the author, this gave the story a happy ever after kind of ending. However, the revised version was not well received. After a month on the market, it had hardly sold any copies and the books were collecting dust on the store shelves. The store owners desperately tried to get rid of the book and have resorted to all sorts of promotions and discounts to sell it. Even now, the only edition of To Kill the Brave you can find in the market is the newer one, whereas the older edition is nearly impossible to find. Anyway, I couldn't bring myself to give such a poorly rated book to Nechka, so I spent a few days looking and managed to find a few copies of the old edition in a warehouse. I picked out a copy that looked relatively new and wrapped it up as a present for Nechka. If you're interested, I can give you this extra copy to read. The pages are pretty old though, so please be gentle with it. Oh, and uh, here's a copy of the newer edition too. They gave me a free copy when I went to buy some Chocowaddle. So that's how they're trying to sell off the book. Could it really be that bad? Even Paimon's curious now. Within three while we're on a world Paimon. Okay, but you'll have to carry Paimon for a while. Once Paimon's done reading it herself, she'll read it out for you. Let's get going. Slasoli lives pretty far from the tribe, so it'll take us some time to get there. But we're gonna teleport, so we'll be fine. I look at the picture, and who is that out of curiosity? Is this gonna show a Loy throughout the game? What is going on at the front gate? It's still... Oh, they're eating, now, mind. He's like, nom nom nom, food, food, mmm, food. Go on now, Yangu. Nechka is still resting. Yeah, come on! Fuck! I wanna see her! Huh? <gasps> Sexy lady. Hey, 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 what are you sipping? Oh, I went off though. <laughs> surprise. And even Shilonin is here too. We can't visit Nanisha. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen you, Auntie. I received Nishka's letter. She wanted a copy of To Kill the Brave, right? Well, I've brought the book for her. There are several editions of the book in oh, that God, one. Oh, God, you're Which version she prefer? Um, Paimon? I think you're funny. Oh my god, this is like Scooby-Doo piece of shit. I asked a messenger from the Science of the Canopy. It seems this softcover edition is one of the most popular options, so I brought it for Nechka. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, Shilonin. Let's go inside. I was just boiling some chocolate, so you can all try some. Shilonin Ooh. used to love drinking chocolate. <gasps> Paimon is hiding. <laughs> Where's Paimon go? She came to visit me. I want to give her a hug. You already a big girl by the time I finally had my Nechka. All right, for now let's. Oh, oh what's going on with your head? Oh, uh, Auntie, let's go inside. Traveler, please help me get her into the house. Okay, yeah, sure thing. Oh, Paimon will help too. Be good, Yangu, and don't get in the way. It really goes on fat. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get indoors. Watch your step, Auntie. Yeah, careful. Actually, you too. Cause she wear heels too. Now we're in the house. Sorry, Nechka's illness has been flaring up recently, so I was up for a few nights. I suddenly started to feel dizzy in the sun. I hope I didn't scare you. Ooh, Have a seat. Elegant walking. I'll fetch you a few cups of chocolate. Please wait a moment. Oh, I've already brought them over. This cup's for you, Auntie, oh and these God. are for you too. Why show the good pills like that in the camera angle? Chocolate? What does it taste like? Paimon's heard that it can be pretty bitter. Traveler, could you give it a try first? No, oh, fine. Auntie always adds a lot of sugar. It won't be bitter. Oh, okay. Trust the elegant woman.
The last time you came to visit, you were still just a kid. But now you're a pillar of the Children of Echoes. No, of all Natlan even. Oh, well, it's all thanks to the drinks I had here and the books I happened to read. You've been close to quite some time, I think. We heard that you two are from the same tribe, but Paimon had no idea you were so close. When I was little, my parents were always talking about how skilled Auntie was at forging ancient names and how she was a good role model for the rest of us. The moment I became idle at home, they would toss me into Auntie's workshop to watch and learn. Then I would have your parents go back, boil you a pot of chocolate, and let you play in the house. Yeah, and then I would drink and listen to you banging away with your tools in the workshop. But eventually, she moved out of the tribe to find some more space, and I didn't have the chance to visit again after that. But why did you seem so familiar with the place when you went to the kitchen for the drinks just now? Because the layout of this place is identical to her old house. Let me see, uh-huh, yeah. That should be Nichka's bedroom then. That's right. <laughs> I remember you used to hunker down in the room to read and draw, but you're all grown up now. Even if you wanted to live here, I'm afraid you've already outgrown Nechka's bed. Shalonin seems just like an older sister to Nichka. That's how Nechka sees Shalonin too. Whenever she's feeling better, she always asks me when her pen pal sister will be coming to visit. Well, yeah, I'm here now, and even brought a gift as an apology. I'll leave the book here. You said Nechka asked you for the book? I hope it wasn't too much trouble to get. Really, I'm surprised that she even asked you for a present. When she's at home, she'd even ask me for permission to eat some snacks. <sighs> Maybe I've been too strict with her. She's obviously starting to like her big sister more than her own mother. Oh, really? Well, I'd say I really haven't done enough to deserve the title of big sister. Yeah, I uh, wasn't able to help her when she was sick and I didn't even come and visit her that many times. Well, the only thing I have been able to do is to help her find some books. Don't be too hard on yourself, Shilonin. You have great responsibilities as the name engraver of the tribe. We both know you are far too busy to take care of her. The responsibilities on your shoulders also became far heavier when I gave up on my work. You just had more important things to tend to, Auntie. No one in the tribe blames you. We all know that Nechka needs her mother's care. But that doesn't change the fact that I gave up on my work. And even now, I still have not found the courage to pick up my hammer again. I'm sorry to leave you to shoulder all the responsibilities alone, Shilonin. <sighs> Oh. oh, why so somber all of a sudden? Uh, don't be so sad, everyone. Hasn't Nechka gotten better lately? Oh, pff, relax, Auntie. I can handle the work. But once Nechka is back on her feet, you should get back to work and let me have a vacation. You'll be the one who's busy then. And I'll be sitting at the side drinking chocolate and cheering you on. <laughs> if that day really comes, you can have as much chocolate as you like. So how did Nezuka get so sick? <laughs> if you asked me before, I wouldn't have even been able to talk about it. But now that she is gradually recovering, I've also gained some courage to face what happened back then. Nezuka's illness actually originates from the Abyss. What? That night, I was in the tribe, having a discussion over the forging of new ancient names. Before we could finish our discussion, the alarm started to ring outside. A horde of monsters from the Abyss suddenly attacked the tribe, so everyone banded together to fight them off. I joined the fray as well, and it wasn't until the monsters were repelled that I got back home with some guards from the tribe. But Nechka was gone. I can't remember how long I spent searching for her. Maybe for two or three days. In the end, we found Nechka at the bottom of a short cliff. She was holding a dried up embercor flower in her hand, and there were traces of abyssal corruption around her wounds. I know. It was all my fault. Before the incident, Nechka had asked if I could forge an ancient name for her. Work was busy at the time, so I told her that if she could find an ember core flower, I would use it as material to forge her an ancient name. Oh, Nechka. My daughter. My Nechka. I was holding her in my arms, but... No matter how many times I called her name, she wouldn't open her eyes and look at me. I was the one who decided to move my workshop to the outskirts of our tribe for work. And I was the one who left her home alone. Oh, my daughter, my Nechka, why do you have to suffer like this? Whoa, hey, hey, it's okay, right? 
Mitch is getting better. She already has the strength to write letters now, doesn't she? We, uh, well, she learned and has even brought her a gift. Things will get better. I'm sorry. I just can't control myself whenever I remember that time. Phew. All right. It's not every day that we get guests. I really shouldn't be crying like this. I asked someone to buy some ingredients for me. So why don't you stay for dinner tonight? I'll make some shrimp bisque, grilled fish and mint sauce, and tower tacos. <gasps> Taco Bell! To make, and we don't want you to tire yourself out. Let's fix, let me fix my cooking skills. <laughs> Thank you both, but don't worry. It's just a few dishes. I'll be fine. You three just need to make sure everything gets eaten up. I can't eat a lot at this age. Oh, we haven't had anything to eat yet, so don't worry. We'll make sure there are no leftovers. I promise the plate will be pick clean. Ah, it just occurred to me that Shalonen likes to eat cheesy crab hot pot. Why don't I make that instead of the grilled fish and mint sauce? I remember you don't like picking out fish bones. Nah, both are fine with me. I've learned to just chew up the fish bones now. Oh, oh. come on now. If you don't want to pick out the bones, I can just take them out for you. Anyway, for dessert, would you like a cup of grain fruit or chocolate? Cup of grain fruit! Chocolate! How about a cup of grain fruit mixed with chocolate? Both will fine. Okay, got it. I'll go start cooking, but could you do me a favor in the meantime? I ordered a bunch of ingredients, and they should be here any minute now. Would you go check by the door and see if they were already here? If so, please bring them in. Come on, Shilohanen. Stop lying around. You shouldn't nap before dinner. It'll ruin your appetite. <laughs> hey, I'm not a kid anymore, you know. You don't have to worry about my appetite. That's beside the point. If you don't watch out for your health while you're still young, then when you get older, you'll... All right, all right. I'm getting up. I just want to sleep. God damn. We'll go check on the ingredients with Shilonin. It isn't far, so it shouldn't take us long. <sighs> That kid. What? She's a grown ass adult. Still, we hold those six hills. Can I check her room out? Nope, we can't. The other room is like right here, too. Okay, let's get out of here. Not so far away, right? Okay, it's right there. We're going fishing. That's it. That's what it looks like. Oh, did it? Okay, never mind. I thought we'd see someone come flying down on a Yukasaur as soon as we came out. A messenger from the Science of the Canopy wouldn't be flying here. They usually come climbing down the cliffs nearby. No need to look. There isn't anyone on the cliffs. Maybe we, uh, we should. Uh, so, should we keep walking? I, I just saw a ghost. <laughs> what? Hey, you there. Sorry, but does Tlasoli live around here? Oh, are you the one who's supposed to deliver the ingredients? I don't see any ingredients. Ingredients? Are you kidding? I was nearly eating myself. <laughs> Never mind that now. Those monsters are still hot on my heels. Please, you've got to help me. Oh. Shilonen, we... Uh, where'd she go? Nah, she said something. Uh oh. What the? Even the little one? I don't want to kill that thing! Oh! Oh, never mind. Let's just kill anyways. Sorry! No choice! Keep kicking your roller skaters on the little one. But do I got a choice? Probably not! Keep swinging and stuff. What is up? I kill your son! Ugh! Uh, okay. Let's go, Malali. Make them wet, all of them. Da, 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 da. Let's do it again. That's okay. Kachina. Great magician doesn't know. Beto. And great magician. Oh, great! Just run away. Yeah, you're gonna be gone. Move! I'm trying to kill your friend over here! Damn, Lenny. He's, this guy's pile and he's gonna lays a lot of dents against it. Okay, he is. Aim for the headshot mostly. Nice. We took that shit down. Alright. That should be it for the monsters. 
Yeah, it was easier than I thought. Oh, it also seems we're in good luck. The goods weren't damaged either. Strange, we didn't see any monsters on the way here. Uh, you didn't provoke them, didn't you? Yeah, right. I use this road to deliver goods all the time, and I've never been attacked like this before. It's the main road in and out of the tribe, so people often come here to clear out any monsters. This area is usually very safe. I don't know what happened, but it seems like all the monsters around here have gone berserk. Even the docile Tepetlosaurs are in a frenzy. Tilsoli doesn't even forge ancient names anymore. So why can't she just move back to the tribe? If she comes back, Nechko will even be able to find some playmates. She's so young and hasn't even, um, uh, Nechka's playmates. No, wait, I, I feel like oh. my friends have played with her before. They've even told me about Nechka's favorite game. If I remember right, it was... Oh my god, no, him too? Strange. I always remembered it before. <sighs> How could I forget all of a sudden? Look at that! He has a Blaze Gem inscription too! So luck shouldn't be a problem. You should go back to the tribe. It seems like you had quite the scare today. We'll take the ingredients back for you. I'll carry these bags, and you two can carry the rest. I'm gonna help too. Huh? Oh, sure! Don't I'm be suspicious! Take care of these grapefruit that fell out of the bag. If you say so. Thank you so much. I guess today's just a really bad day for me to go outside. Hmm. That's so weird. Why is everyone we run into today having trouble remembering stuff? Oh, uh, and they're all carrying Blaze Gem inscriptions. I'm not, not sure how to say it, but she's got a strange feeling about this. Like it's all somehow related. Once you live long enough, you'll eventually start experiencing strange days like this. Let's bring the ingredients back. Otherwise, we won't have anything to eat tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is me back. Hey, we're back. We'll find some ah, monsters. You're finally back. What took you so long? I was starting to worry. Oh, yeah, we uh, ran into some small problems, but everything's fine now. All right. As long as everything's okay now, you all have a seat. I'll get the food ready. It won't take long. Won't take long, if it does. So let's get the food. Clean it sometime. Just, just a the table and I'll um, have another. Oh, there's so much tasty food! You're amazing, Tlasoli! Taco Bell time! Oh, pretty simple dishes to make. Don't be shy. Dig in, everyone. What would you like to start with, Paimon? <laughs> Paimon will help herself. Um, Paimon will have some of this. Okay. And a this. Yes. Oh, and this! Oh, yeah. Can I get another serving, please? Y you're done already? Do you even chew when you're eating? Of course! Didn't I say that I chew up the fish bones? I'll have just one more fish and leave the rest for Nechka. It's okay. Just go ahead and eat all you'd like. Nechka can't eat these dishes anyway. Her body is too weak to digest these kinds of things. I'll just make some broth for her. Oh no! But Paimon thought she'd already recovered from her illness! Injuries caused by the Abyss cannot be undone. The doctor said the fact that she's stable is already quite a miracle. But it's okay. Nechka can talk to me now and can even hold my hand. That's more than I could ask for, even if she will never again know that I am her mother. Wh what do you mean? Did Abyss be her forget her mother? The doctor said the Abyss has had an irreversible effect on Nechka's soul. She... She's lost all her memories from before she was injured. The doctor fuck, also man, said the this fuck sort of memory loss isn't like simply forgetting something. Rather, she can no longer remember anything from before that fateful day. Huh? But how does that happen? You know about the woven scrolls that the masters of the Nightwind use to record things, right? Mm -hmm. Well, generally speaking, forgetting things is like when the woven scrolls would gradually start to fade. As long as you repaint and weave the threads again, the faded memories will come back to life. But the case of Nechka's memory loss is as if her woven scroll had been cut in two, and the portion of the past was burnt to ashes. The books she loved to read, the flowers she took joy to grow, and the time she spent in this house were all cut off by the abyss, and can never be retrieved again. As one example of that, Nechka now only sees me as a strange, unfamiliar auntie who claims to be her mother. She's a good kid, and doesn't want to upset this lady who's been taking care of her so much, so she still calls me mom. But I've always had a feeling that she's constantly wondering about things like, where is her real mother? 
Why is she stuck here in this house? Was she abandoned? Nechka really has no idea that her real mother is right in front of her and has never left. So you plan on recreating Nechka's woven scroll all by yourself? He's like, oh shit, how do you know? What do you mean? Or should I say, you've already started reweaving that scroll long ago. A blazing subscription? The delivery guys. I saw it hanging from his waist, so I asked to borrow it from him. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll return the inscription to him once we've figured everything out. These things aren't cheap, after all. When did you know? Yeah, I, I noticed it back when Blaze Gem inscriptions suddenly became popular among the tribe. It was then that I also noticed that everyone wearing Blaze Gem inscriptions had varying degrees of memory loss. Traveler, you've picked up on it too, haven't you? Everyone's memory loss. Accessories made using ancient names forging techniques. <laughs> For what's only supposed to be a pretty souvenir, this inscription contains a phlogiston engraving with a truly overkill level of complexity. The shapes and patterns of these engravings are also identical to that of an ancient name. By making just a few slight adjustments to the layout and connections of the main pattern, you can pretty much qualify this blaze gem inscription as a bona fide ancient name. And yet, you've never told anyone about these engravings in the Blaze Gem inscriptions that can be activated at any time. <sighs> Am I right, Auntie? I knew you were a sharp one, Shilonin. That's right. I have a way to cure Nechka and restore all her memories. It's actually quite simple. I want to forge an ancient name for Nechka that contains all of her past memories. Um, uh, but ancient names must be approved by the Wyab. And the reason they must be approved by the Wyab is because the memories they bear are all stored within the ley lines. Extracting those memories from the ley lines requires the Wyab's assistance. But your plan wouldn't need you to do any of that. Right, Auntie? Your Blaze Gem inscriptions will help you complete that part of your plan in the ley lines' place. You will use the inscriptions to form a massive memory bank for Nechka. And the ancient names you're trying to forge will be used to extract corresponding memories from the memory bank. A memory bank? Wait, so the reason all those people were having trouble remembering stuff is because the Blaze Gem inscriptions took away any memories related to Nechka? Even though Nechka has forgotten her own past. Using other people's memories of Nechka to reconstruct her past? Ah, this is the first time I've heard of such an idea. You've seen through my plans, Shilonin. You're as outstanding as ever. Far more brilliant than me. So I, it's like, I give it, that's why I was so tired. I intend to use this method to collate all the memories related to Nechka and allow her to regain her past again. But wouldn't extracting memories like that hurt the person carrying the Blaze Gem inscription? Not at all. Every time a Blaze Gem inscription extracts memories, the process is under my precise control. That way, there's no chance of anyone in the tribe getting hurt. This is the central inscription that controls all the other Blaze Gem inscriptions, which will also soon serve as Nechka's ancient name. You made all of this yourself, Tlasoli? Even though it's not an official ancient name. Yes, it was lots and lots of work. It was truly exhausting. Or perhaps I've just grown old. You saw it yourself. I nearly fainted just from being in the sun. I could collapse tomorrow, or even in the next few moments. But Nechka's ancient name is still far from completion. I've solved the issue of storing memories, but I still don't know how to connect Nechka up to this central inscription. I've thought you just modify your own ancient name. I considered it, but this matter doesn't have anything to do with my ancient name. It's of no help to me. And I don't need its help now. You know the price to pay for making something like this. Yes, I do. But as long as I can get my Nechka back, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Otherwise, Nechka won't have any chance of reclaiming her past once I'm dead and gone. She won't remember me. And she won't even remember why her name is Nechka. When that time comes, she'll be left to drift around the world all alone, unknowing of where she came from or where she should go. She is my daughter. The one to whom I gave the Nechka name. Whether it be as her mother, or as a name engraver, I can't simply stand by and let her name disappear. Shilonin! Shh, I'll think about this for a moment, Paimon. <sighs> I'll take the central inscription with me. I'm going to completely disassemble it to confirm its components and uses. I won't make any promises until I've checked everything. Say goodnight to Nechka for me, Auntie.
Oh, wait. I've also finished the inscriptions for the Traveler in Paimon. Let me fetch them for you. Um... Is this even okay? I'm sorry it took me so long to finish them. <laughs> Hold on, Auntie. The Traveler and Paimon have never met Nechka before, so you can't draw any memories from them. That wasn't my intention. They're just ordinary gifts. Please, take them. Huh? Did you just woke up? You heard that? What was that noise? Nechka must have woken up and wants to get out of bed on her own. Sorry, I'll go check on her first. Nechka, don't try to get out of bed. Just tell mom if you need anything. You go ahead and take care of Nechka, auntie. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. There are a few things I want to tell you. Okay, surely. Let's head back to the tribe first. Oh. There are some things I need to get from my workshop. Disassembling the central inscription? It's not going to be easy. Yeah, surely. Act 2 seems to be a lot of pain compared to the first part 1 and Act 2 of the story quest for this. Okay, now your workshop. Let's see, what would we need to talk about? You two can wait outside for a moment. I just need to go in and grab something. The workshop is a little messy, so... Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you around. It misses what I like best. Yeah, Empire agrees. Oh, yeah, that's not really what I mean. It's not the mess that's really the problem. It's just that the workshop is cluttered with way too much stuff. Books, files, and even ancient texts I got from the Masters of the Nightwind. Everything's piled up to the ceiling. You probably won't know where to step once you're inside. Kachina suffered quite an unfortunate series of events the last time she went inside. Well, I suppose it was my fault for being so focused on searching for information at the time that I forgot to lock the door. Oh no. After entering the workshop, she was shocked to find herself face to face with a massive woven scroll from the Masters of the Nightwind, and then she turned around and knocked over a huge stack of forging blueprints. What, what the fuck is this, Shalone? She tried to step out of the way, but tripped on a poster tube that was behind her, and then boom! The forging blueprints came crashing down right onto her head. Ah, my head! Oh no! Yeah, muzzle head, ouch. Oh, is Kachina okay? She's lucky I noticed in time. I found Kachina in a daze and managed to save her before an entire set of the history of the Children of Echoes was about to bury her. I then dragged her up to the second floor. Ever since then, Kachina always waits outside the door and doesn't dare take a step in whenever she comes to see me. Hmm. Are there really that many books inside? Yeah, you're an artisan and craftswoman after all. We thought there would be weapons and armor hanging all over the place. But it seems more like a library than a workshop. Well, my primary work is forging ancient names, which is much trickier than making swords and tools. Aside from the necessary craftsmanship, I also need to consult many ancient texts. You probably already know that each ancient name represents a certain spirit, behind which are countless related stories to support it. In other words, the essence of an ancient name is the physical manifestation of a certain spiritual will. And, as a name engraver, when I'm working on a new ancient name, I'm not only trying to give it a physical shape, but more importantly, I'm also trying to understand the spirit contained within the name. And to do that, I have to collect as many related stories as possible and read through them all. But, as you might know, People tend to add a lot of, uh, extraneous details when it comes to stories about themselves. For stories that have been clearly exaggerated or altered, I must gather other related stories and information as cross-references. This way, I can filter out all the absurd and exaggerated details and restore the person's life to its true nature. Only in true stories can you find the authentic spirit, and this is the only way for the spirit to become an ancient name that matches its essence. We've heard about the concept behind ancient names before, but after hearing you explain the details, Hyla can't help but think that ancient names are really powerful. If only they could be even more powerful. Well, no matter how powerful ancient names could be, they would never be able to suddenly turn into a blade or allow you to smash through an entire cliff in one punch. It's just a form of spiritual power that's passed down from generation to generation. It doesn't have those kinds of physically tangible effects. Um, well, 
Take your own names, for example. From the moment you appeared in this world, some person had already prepared a blessing for you. And that person then condensed this blessing into your name and gave it to you as a gift. It may feel like the moment you received your name is already in the past, but it will always stay with you and move with you in the future. Names are blessings for the future from people standing in the past. Well, that's what Auntie once told me. And with this blessing, people will become more confident as they walk into their future. D to put it another way, it's like having a lamp in your hand as you walk through the darkness of night. Oh, I know gets that. If you're alone when you're walking in the dark, it's easy to get scared and tired quickly. But if someone else is walking with you, then it won't be nearly as scary. And, well, you might still get tired, but it'll still be a whole lot better than walking alone. The Traveler always has Paimon by his side, though, so he'll never have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Oh, Paimon sure many wish they could be in your shoes, Traveler. Please, you always don't want to get tired when you're on the goddamn road. I was always flying! Of course it gets tiring! But we're getting off topic. We can talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. Try not to fall asleep on me next time. Anyway, huh? this is what she does? Foley told me when I was training as a name engraver. And to be honest, I've only understood 20% of what she said at most. I've never been able to figure out the rest. But doesn't that mean you basically don't get it? Well, that's not entirely true. Auntie and I have at least come to a consensus on the most important thing. Ugh, you know what, I am sick of talking. We can talk about all of this later. Please, uh, wait a moment while I grab my things. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I open the door and walk into the workshop. Some oscillating crashes sounds in the workshop, followed by another quick and squeaks. Eventually, she quickly runs out the door with a bucket on it. She then turns around to kick the door closed, trying to sound the dusty book found the gun inside. Uh, did you hear a whole section of something collapse in there just Paimon, why are you peeking? <coughs> it's, it's fine, it's fine. It was just a bunch of very old ancient name records. I've already made copies of them. I, uh, kept this set of phlogiston wedges in the back, so it wasn't easy to take out. I had to resort to brute force. Come on, let's go disassemble the central inscription. It shouldn't take long. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. For the next episode, all right, I'm gonna do. Like, subscribe, I'll see you later. Sayonara.